pass it over to the curtain. Can see you. Do you have the entire camera on? Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Hi. Hello. Come on. There you go. Has anybody got their volume on? I don't hear anybody. They got off. You? They got off. Can you hear me now? I can. Yes. There you go. Yeah. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. My name's Damon. Uh, I'm Dimitri. Dimitri, nice to meet you, my wife. Hey, hey, Young, hey Young she's hiding over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is Milana. Hi, Milana. Say hi. Am I? Mm -hmm. On speaker. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Mrs. Smith. Mr. Smith is sitting right next to me. We muted everybody just for a moment. Um, we're gonna take questions um, at the very end after we kind of go over everything with everybody. Um, and so, if you guys have any questions you can either write them in the chat or you can ask them after we're done here. We just didn't want like a hundred people asking questions at one time because we thought that might get a little confusing. Um, so, but we were gonna wait just a couple more minutes to see if more people join us and then we'll go ahead and get started. So I think we're gonna unmute you for, for a moment here if you guys wanna talk to each other, but just so you know why it goes on mute um, in just a moment here when we get started. But as far as the questions, don't type them yet. Wait till we open them up because I don't want to have to scroll all the way up through the chat to try to find questions. So hang on to your questions until we're done towards the end if you can. Or we'll ask you again. That's me at all. Okay, now you can unmute yourselves if you want to talk. Hey, uh, this is Ryan and, and Katie, uh, Emery's parents. This is our first uh, summer oh, yeah. with you guys. So Emery's been loving it. Uh, we've been loving it. So thanks. You're all fantastic parents because uh, you got good kids. Good job. Uh, we did have a question since this is our first summer though. Um, we got the email today about just before we get started on the next school year, sorry um about the two weeks like left 
in mm -hmm. summer camp is it is it ending this week or do we have there's still next week so we have this week and next week still okay um, yeah. cool good enough thanks yeah times at 603 all right we give everybody just two more minutes we'll start at 605 just to make sure everybody's able to get on and there's still people trickling in Mr. Hunt on there yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm here. I see him. <laughs> Well, Mr. how are you Hunt, all I doing? haven't seen your haircut. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Hunt, where'd your hair go? Shaved <laughs> it off. It's the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last time we saw each other, we had pandemic hair. <laughs> On the line here. Milana, hi. Hi. How's summer? Good. Good. Have you done anything wild and crazy during this interesting summer we have? Um, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a lot of sunshine. Yeah. 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 At least we've been getting a little bit of sun here and there. Mm -hmm. it's been nice. Yeah. Oh, there's one more. Let her in. All right. You want to go ahead and get started? Yeah. All right. I'm going to put everybody on mute just to make it easier for everybody. And go ahead. And again, we'll unmute everybody. We just don't want to have a whole bunch of people talking at one time. I'm sure everybody wouldn't do that anyways, but just in case. Um, so I'm going to start off by we're going to do some introductions in case there's people on here that don't know us very well yet. A lot of you guys have known us for quite some time, um, but there are some new faces. And so we want to be able to uh, give basically our face to you guys so you guys can get to know who we are. So I'm Mrs. Smith, um, and this is Mr. Smith who's sitting next to me, and then Mr. Hunt. Mr. Hunt, you can, is not, oh, you have him mute it. Oh, I'm um, sorry, yeah. I can unmute Mr. Hunt. <laughs> so Mr. Hunt can say hi, so you guys can see him. Or maybe not. Never mind. <laughs> but Mr. Hunt, so the three of us are um, the board at Fellowship Christian School, um, but we also teach at the school as well. Um, we are primarily middle school and high school teachers at the school, and then I also do some stuff with the elementary kids too, which I absolutely love because I love the little kids too. And um, so tonight we just kind of wanted to introduce ourselves, give you guys kind of an idea of where we're at with the school year, um, different policies and procedures we're putting in place. I've answered a lot of these questions already over the phone but um, I wanted to be able to put something out there for basically everybody to kind of come back to and listen to and um, see where we're at as well with everything um, so some of the things that have been asked of course are like whether or not we're starting in person um, what that's gonna look like if we are starting in person um, and um, also like backup plans and things like that any new policies and procedures um, what we're doing as far as like face coverings and those types of things those are the main questions i've been asked uh, what happens if somebody is sick um, those types of procedures so we have specifics um, for all of those different types of things that we've thought out we have somebody there's actually quite a few families that regularly support the ministry um, there's a there's one specifically um, who has told us that they want to help support us with any kind of um, school start stuff that we might need whether that might be extra cleaning type machines or filters or any of those types of things so that's awesome um, and we're deciding specifically on what types of things we want in the building and what we think would be best for the, our specific building um, for a school start this year um, we have had summer camp since the week after i think june 19th or maybe it was the week of june 19th um, and so this is we're going into our eighth week and we've been doing awesome. Um, I really want to stress how wonderful all of the parents have been um, that have been attending summer camp too. They've taken the like they've asked ahead of time if they had questions. Um, they've been really good about 
we haven't really changed anything really major with the school. That was one of the questions too. Um, since we're a smaller school, there aren't these huge drastic things that we're really doing because we have a lot of our things that take place um, inside the classrooms anyways, unlike other um, larger schools and other uh, public schools, um, especially where they um, transition a lot between classes and things. Um, but our summer camp has been from 20 to 25 students and um, everything's been going well. They've done lots of hands-on stuff the entire time. They've been inside and outside and they've had two staff plus um, a helper the entire summer. And so um, that's a huge praise for us because everything has been going amazing at the ministry and that we really haven't had to deal with anything throughout the summer other than, you know, um, just communicating on a regular basis with everybody. Um, so that's a positive. Um, some quick reminders. Um, we put supply lists and the school calendar up on our website. So if you guys haven't visited the school website yet, we also sent it out an email, but not everybody has been on our email list. Um, but we did put that out for everybody as well for the school year. Um, we had updates for sports. That's also been a question. We actually are partnering with a new, new league that Mr. Smith will talk about because he's actually our athletic director. Um, so we're excited about that. This year's kind of up in the air, but he'll talk about that later um, just because they don't have decisions made regarding sports 100% yet. Um, and the other reminder is class registration. We have sixth through 12th grade students that get to choose um, their elective classes uh, at the least some of the high school classes also get to choose their core classes so um, which math they want to be in which science they want to be in and which english they all take bible um, and then our elementary um, grades one through five get to choose if they want to be taking Spanish or Russian language class as part of our curriculum. So just a reminder that if you guys haven't had a chance yet, or if you need me to resend the link out to you um, to make sure and you fill those out so that way we know how many kids want to be in Spanish for the year and how many want to be in Russian for our elementary classes, um, as well as our middle school and high school, we want to see um, what electives are most popular so we can get those schedules going because we're hoping to have schedules out um, next week for everybody. We know it's been an interesting summer, so maybe you guys have just got caught up, caught up in other things and haven't had a chance to do that yet. Um, but we're here to help too. If anybody has any questions um, about classes and what they're actually going to be doing in them, we have some details that are posted on the class registration, but we're happy to discuss further with you as well. Um, especially if you know what your child is interested in, we could help with that. Um, and then lastly, our school lunch program. We normally started at the very beginning of the school year, but we're starting it October 9th instead of September 9th, which is the first day of school. So we're pushing it one month. So just so you guys are aware of that as well, um, the first month of school, we're not gonna have the school lunch program going, but that's partially because we have um, people who are gonna be doing the school lunch program. So it's gonna be getting them um, trained in to uh, be able to do that program well. Um, all right, so I am going to hand it over to Mr. Smith. I think I covered all of the things, the reminders anyways. Oh, one other. Middle school and high school orientation was scheduled for the 12th of August, but we're moving it since we can't gather in large groups right now to August 17th online um, Zoom meeting, which we will um, email out. But you can also, uh, if you guys want to go in and look at the school or see where classrooms are or any of that, um, you guys are welcome to go into the school right now too. Um, we actually have tours going on. Um, just give us a heads up and so we can let staff know what time. To, um, you're, a better time. It's okay if they go in because they don't need a, a tour necessarily. Because um, we do have summer camp going there all day from 8.30 till 4, Monday through Thursday. So if you guys want to head into the building and check it out and to see where all the classes are located, you can still do that. Okay, Mr. Smith, moving on to school start stuff and procedures. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you guys are here for um, to kind of figure out what we're doing for this upcoming school year. Um, I know that's been a lot of the questions we've been fielding about what that's going to look like, what our plans are, um, kind of what we put in place. Um, so our, our goal, we have two goals. One, to return to school in person. Um, we want to get everybody back in the classroom. We feel it's really important. We uh, love and miss everybody. And we feel that getting face-to-face -face with the kids is super important. 
Um, we do feel that our online transition last spring went pretty well. Um, we've gotten some feedback and what you know we could have done better and some really good feedback on what we did well. Um, and comparing and contrasting kind of the experiences for everybody that we know, um, we feel that we did a really good job and a lot of the kids got um, you know, more of that face-to-face -face interaction um, and that structure that we thought was really important. So um, parents, awesome job on that transition. I know it wasn't super easy to do that. Um, and without your support and everything, we couldn't do that. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to provide what we did without your guys' help and support. So thank you so much for that. Um, our goal number two is to return to school, um, but do it in a safe manner, right? Where everybody's safe, the kids, the families, the teachers. Um, there's a lot of variables that come into place when we're making these decisions um you know our staff um what the disease outbreak is currently looking like um, and we're monitoring everything on a day-to-day -day basis we look at the cdc guidelines we've looked at what snohomish county health department has put out um, we've looked at uh, the numbers currently um, and they do get updated well almost daily sometimes they're a little behind but we look at those um, to make all these decisions um, and so right now we have the goal of returning on september 9th to be in person uh, but we have planned and put in contingency um, for whatever does come up. Um, and what that'll look like, essentially we have three different options. Um, one is to return to school completely um, in person, face to face, um, with all of the mitigation strategies that we've um, you know, come, on, come and put into place. So what those are essentially is we have temperature checks at each door. Um, so we will require the kids when they come in to uh, have a temperature check every morning. And explain um, the machine a little and bit. it's a it's actually a really cool machine it's it's on a stand um it's got like a little lever where it kind of comes up and down <laughs> as cool as a um, thermometer can be it is i thought it was pretty <laughs> i did it at home a whole bunch of times i was taking my temperature over and over and, yeah it's true <laughs> um but it um it'll read your temperature super quick all you do is literally walk by it um and we have we're gonna get a couple of them we're gonna have one at each door um, we have one for summer camp right we have one for summer camp that we've already been using it's been working really well um, and so that's one thing that we'll have in the morning for pickup, for pickup, or sorry, for drop off. Um, and then we have also um, put in place some, um, some strategies to social distance while the kids are in class, um, while they're in the building, um, whether that's separating the, the desks, you know, the six feet, um, and there's some other. Um, we have, we're, we still have the kids together like we do for summer camp right now um, because the kids are still engaging with one another, but we have, basically pods of students which is not very much different than what we've already done as a school so again so we're saying there's not really major changes but if you're brand new to the school we'll kind of explain it to you um when we have things like recess and things like that we ha typically have two grade levels going out at a time so we don't have huge amounts of kids going out at a time going out to recess at a time anyways um, we've also bought more equipment that we haven't put up so we have some basketball hoops soccer um, so we're going to have four areas for recess um, so that way the the kids are uh, yeah exciting huh Milana <laughs> <laughs> um, and so um, that way it, there's not a huge congregation of kids in in specific areas um, we say all of these things knowing that kids are still going to come into contact with one another. So that's something that you guys should be aware of too. And you, I'm sure you all know, um, if kids are going to be in school, there's going to be some contact with one another. Um, but we're hoping to mitigate that and continue to do basically what we've done with summer camp, which is the um, smaller pod type groupings. Um, summer camp was allowed to have about 22 as a whole um where they said that they felt like it was safely fine to have them as a whole group um and so um when we're doing our recesses that's what we're talking about um kind of if we're still at the same stage as we're at whenever we start school in the in september then to have them broken up into um different uh recess areas but still out at recess at the different at different times and kind of rotation with the equipment so sometimes they'll get to do soccer and basketball and other times they'll be on the playground because we have three recesses per day so other times they'll be on the playground with four square and what's the one when you hit the tetherball, tetherball. Uh, or volleyball sometimes we have volleyball set up so there's going to be different recess areas which is awesome for the kids anyways um, so but yeah. continue on yeah um and so the temperature checks and the social distancing are two things that we're going to utilize and then um as far as face coverings i know that's a big question that a lot of people are asking um so for the younger kids which is pre-k up through second grade we're going to require a face shield 
Um, so, and uh, do you have one that we can show? Oh, yeah. um, she actually has one. We've ordered quite a few of them. Um, the, a lot of the kids have been wearing them at summer camp. Um, no, uh, it's just camp are younger, so it's seven and under. They didn't. Okay. Um, anyway, she'll show you what those look like. Um, for, a, for, for a third grade and up, we are we're going to require a mask. Um, and it's not going to be worn all day, so they're not going to be wearing them when they're eating. They're not going to be wearing them when they're going outside on the playground um, and those types of things. Um, but we've been looking at a lot of the CDC guidelines and those types of things, and we're trying to work that into our school and how that works as a whole. Um, and we're trying to do our best as far as being able to find the right solution for each age group. Because if anybody who has ever worked with a child knows that the younger the child is, the, it's going to be much harder to get them to, to wear something or to, um, you know, a pre-K child trying to wear a mask doesn't seem real feasible to us. So that's what a face shield looks like. Shields. So it has a elastic on the back. And there's kid size or adult size. Very and nice. You just put it on. Um, and so that's what we're going to do as far as face coverings go. Um, and we can take questions afterwards and whatnot. Um, what we need in partnership with the parents, what we need is, is essentially there's going to be a zero, um, I guess, tolerance policy for any symptoms, right? For any, any symptoms of any sickness. And I know that's going to be very difficult um, with flu season and with colds and those types of things that go around normally. Um, the unfortunate thing is we don't know the difference between if it's a flu or a cold or if it's a you know, COVID-19, right? And so for us, it's if we see a symptom, if, if there's a temperature, um, if there's a, a cough, fever, um, runny nose, those types of things, um, we will end up isolating the child and having them go home. Um, the procedure for that is going to be if they do test negative for COVID-19, they will have to be, remain at home for 10 days. Um, if they do not take a test, they have to be um, at home for 14 days. Um, and so those are in line with kind of the CDC guidelines that they've, re they've released. Um, and so really we need the partnership with the parents. So um, essentially don't send your kid to school if they're showing any signs of sickness or anything like that, um, which is what we need your help with. Um, in a normal school year, you know, it's not a huge deal. We deal with it. We call the parent, they go home, but this school year is going to be a little bit different in various ways. And so we need your help with that. And you, the summer camp people have done an awesome, amazing job with that. And so we don't anticipate any issues with that. Um, we just want to put that out there that um, if there is a symptom, unfortunately at this point, we do have to take it very seriously and and you know err on the side of yes it could be that and so we don't we, we want to be in person and stay in person right and so we don't want to end up having um you know a bunch of outbreaks because people aren't being more cautious than uncautious and unfortunately that's what will happen if we have a bunch of COVID 19 the health department isn't going to be like oh yeah that's okay no problem stay open and even though you have a bunch of outbreaks in your school so that's why we're just kind of saying we are in this all together and we want everybody to be there and we know you guys want everybody to be there and again everybody that we've worked with so far through summer camp has done an amazing job with this and so we kind of expect the same from the rest of our families too as um, we're getting into the school year. Yeah. So those are some of the procedures and policies that we've put into place for being back to school in person. Um, we've also for cleaning the building um, we had um, a generous donation they've actually um, donated some UV lighting um, which uh, I guess so from what I know of my, my research you put them up they have to be on for about 45 minutes to an hour and they actually kill all the germs on it, all the surfaces. Um, and so they, they're going to donate some of those. Um, and then we've also um, updated our procedures for as far as how we clean the building every single day. Um, you know, some of the products that we use to clean and which we were doing anyway, but just kind of going a little bit above and beyond kind of the recommendations. Um, and so all the surfaces and everything are going to be clean on a daily basis. Um, and then also the UV lighting is going to be running when the kids are not in the, in the school. So uh, after school and then going forward. Um, and so I think those will hopefully help with the surface to surface transmission. Um, so that is in person learning. So that's option number one. That's our goal. That's number one. That's where we want to be. Um, and that's where we are right now. And that's what we're working towards right now. Um, the other option is, is kind of a hybrid option that we've discussed. So um, looking at the numbers of COVID-19 and looking at the, how it affects different age groups, um, it looks like the younger you are, the better you do and the, the, the least transmission rate there is. Um, and so the other option is kind of a hybrid where we would have um, elementary, so pre-K through grade five in person, and then possibly high school and middle school doing remote learning. And so that- Like a staggered start. Um, yeah, so kind of like a hybrid type deal. And so that is if, um, 
we're unable to or we don't feel comfortable returning to school, um, you know, that's an option that we've also been putting into place. Um, and then the third option is obviously what we don't want to do. And it, it's, it's not what we're looking at right now is having people do remote learning. Um, and that's, you know, if there's the with numbers emergency care. And with emergency care. So um, the people who do need the child care like we did in the springtime can, can still come. Um, and so those are the three options that we're that we're deciding upon. And, and right now, like I said, number one is the is the option that we're at right now or that we want to get to that we're that we're hoping to implement on September 9th. Um, we're gonna have a final. We're trying to make the decision as close to the start of the school year as we can so we know what the numbers look like. And we're keeping an eye on a lot of the schools that have already opened throughout this, the country. Um, there's a few in Georgia that have released and a few throughout scattered throughout the US. So we're keeping an eye and kind of seeing what, what is happening with them and kind of what they've been doing and their strategies and those types of things to, to help us with our opening. So um, September, or I'm sorry, August 28th is when we're gonna have a full and, and final decision as far as if we're gonna be fully in person or whether it's gonna be a hybrid option. Um, and so that's when we're gonna send out the update and be like, yep, we're 100%, we're gonna do this, we're in. Um, right now, that's where we're at. We're gonna be, right now we, we're working towards being in person. Um, and so that's where, if we had to decide right now, that's what we would be doing with the mitigation strategies. Um, but we still want to let you guys know that those other options are on the table in case things, you know, get worse, um, in case the numbers get worse or, um, you know, there have been guidance released by Snohomish County Health District that have, has recommended that everybody be online. We're in a little bit different a position as far as public schools versus private schools, just because we're a lot smaller. We're able to be a little bit more flexible. Um, and be able to implement things a lot easier than public schools can. Uh, so that's kind of where we see that we can differ from public schools as far as that goes. But we're taking all of it into consideration because our number one goal is to return, but do it safely. Um, if we can't do it safe for everybody with our kids, our families, our staff, everybody involved, then we won't do it. But if we can and we feel comfortable with that and it's in God's hands, then we will return. Um, and so that's ultimately where we, what we feel about that. This is one last thing. Um, all of this stuff um, we will send out to you guys um, in email also with details. These are uh, what we were actually planning on doing when we first started fellowship as far as the pickup lane goes. Um, our pickup and drop off, like we were saying, is going to be a little bit different than it was before. Um, pickup time, we will more than likely have a staggered pickup. We were just discussing specifics about it. and. Um, in order uh, we don't know where we're going to be at we don't know where the numbers or anything are going to be at one at once school starts but where they are right now um we're being cautioned to keep people in their vehicles still um or to have as little uh as few people coming in and out of the building as possible is what we've been guided to do um so we have pickup tags and um these will go in your guys's vehicles um we have a, a few for each family and um, this is how we and we have a, a PA and walkie talkie system through the school too. So the students are going to be staying in their classrooms instead of gathering as a whole entire school at um, pickup time. And as the vehicles come into our school, we're going to have two lanes. We usually have one, um, but we're going to have a two lane pickup and we will be um, looking at your guys's tags in your windows and calling those students to the front and they will be getting um, picked up at our front doors. But again, we'll send the, the specific details of kind of the new pickup procedure to you guys in email as well. So you know all of those different types of things. Um, we just want to be able to let you know kind of the, some of the updates. I didn't really finish talking about how our, our school and our schedule is already kind of set up to work with the different pods um, for those of you that haven't attended before. Um, we already, like I was saying, have our recesses broken up in a manner that, that, yeah, and we also have block scheduling for our older kids. Um, so it's not, we don't have a ton of large transitions in our school already. Um, our schedule has already been set up that way in general. Um, and like I was saying, our, we have three different recess uh, times um, for the kids each day, but there's also, three of the three so there so that so um for example like second and third grade go out go out at one time kindergarten and first grade go out at one time for recess pre-k goes out at one time for recess fourth and fifth and so that's the way our schedule has always been structured um so we're going to continue to follow that for our recess schedules have the extra areas for recess time um, our specials teachers generally go to the classroom already um, that's what they've been doing in past years. So for like art, 
uh, this year, art will go to the classroom for right now anyway. Um, music, we may, may not be starting with music, but we'll have another either drama or um, uh, an additional art class at the beginning. Um, but normally all of the elementary classes get music, PE, art. What am I missing? I'm missing one. Some of them have computers. Oh yeah, and world language. And all of those um, are things that the most of the specials teachers come to the classroom for with you know, PE. They're obviously going to go outside for most of the time. Um, and then for computers, our computers are um, Chromebooks and laptops. So those we can bring to the classrooms also. And just to kind of reiterate, um, also, when we are in person, if somebody doesn't feel comfortable with being in person or if you want to stay home, we are also going to offer um, streaming of our classes. So we're essentially going to read for, I, know this, I don't know if this will apply necessarily for the younger age group, but it will be for uh, the high school, middle school, um, and then some, probably some of the elementary classes. Um, we're going to stream and record a lot of our classes. So if if for some reason a family wants to stay home or if they don't feel comfortable with being sick. there, if they're sick, they don't want to miss out, um, then we will have that option. We're going to stream and record so that they can go back and watch the class and, and see that. So that's an option as well if, if we are in, in person. Um, and so that's so nobody falls behind or whatnot. Um, all right, so transitioning, we're going to move to sports, and this will be very quick. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time on the sports, but I am going to share my screen here real quick. Mr. Hunt. Um, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hunt, did you have something to say? How do you unmute him? I did, I did unmute him. <laughs> Hold on. You can, uh, there you go. There you go. Um, did you want to speak about payments and parents coming in the building? Yeah, do that first. Oh, yeah. That's good. Um, so payments, um, I think almost everybody's pretty familiar with it now. We um, did use QuickBooks for a bit, but we are now doing our entire um, payment system on QuickBooks. And one of the reasons that we did that was because we don't always have a front desk person available anyways in general. So we were trying to figure out a way to streamline and make it easier for families to make payments anytime they want it to, and also to update accounting right away, basically make it easier on us as well. So we're using QuickBooks um, for payments this year. You can use a bank account um, or credit or debit card um, for payments. And that's what we're, we're asking families to use in order to- yeah. um, No in or no in-person payments. Yeah. Well, and especially with the restrictions with gatherings, larger gatherings that people are saying in the school at the beginning of the year, it'll help us not to have those gatherings at the front desk. If you guys have questions or um, if families have questions or you need, want to set up a meeting or anything like that, we're still, we're not telling parents that we don't want to communicate with them because we definitely appreciate and want communication with everybody. Um, we're just asking that if you want it to be in person to just try and give us uh, some time so that we can set it up with you um, ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, you can always uh, call us um, or text us <laughs> if you have our phone number. A lot of families have our phone number now. <laughs> Uh, which is just fine. Um, we have our phones on us, so we're able to reply to texts easier than we are the school phone when we're teaching. Um, but we will have a front desk person still that's able to answer the phone now um, until 12 o'clock every day also. Um, so anything that needs to get passed to teachers or anything like that, um, they'll be up front to answer those calls still. But we are trying to, um, like we were saying, be in person and stay in person. So we're trying to be as cautious as we can, and this is one way that we can do that also. It's 2020. Uh, online payments and cards and stuff, we can use those instead of cash. It works better anyway for everybody, I think. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to share my screen. We're going to move on to sports. Um, can you guys give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen in just a second? What are you pulling up? I'm going to show them the calendar for sports. There's that. I don't need that. I need that one. You can scoot that over. Modified sports calendar. It's the green one. There it is. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hunt. All right. So this is this applies to the high school sports. So this is the WIA's modified sports calendar, and it's all different than what it normally is. So I don't know if you guys can see this really well, so I will just ex kind of explain it. So the WIA has decided to split their season up into four separate seasons this year. This is the high school. Um, this is for high school, yeah. This applies to high school. Um, and so season number one begins September 7th, um, and that'll be cross-country, slow-pitch, softball, golf, and tennis. 
Um, we haven't normally participated in any of those sports, so that probably won't apply to us uh, unless somebody wants to play golf or maybe possibly tennis. Um, Most of them aren't. But so this, anyways. yeah, there's a lot of schools that are not participating in the fall at all, but these sports are the ones that are available. Um, going forward, and this season is probably the one that these next two seasons, seasons two and season three, will probably be the ones that affect us the most as far as high school sports go. Um, season two begins in on uh, December 28th, so essentially the first beginning of January, um, and that's basketball, bowling, boys swim and dive, gymnastics, and wrestling. Um, and we've always competed in boys basketball, um, and so that it normally starts in November. It won't start until season two, which is in January or end of December. And then my tumbling starts. Um, and then that's when tumbling will possibly start as well yeah. um, for Mrs. Smith. Um, after season two, we move to season three, and that's where we might be impacted as well for girls volleyball. Um, we've nor normally participated in girls volleyball, um, and that will start in March. Um, and then we've also got one tacked on here at the end, um, season four, which track and field is, is a possibility for us, uh, no, as well as golf. Um, and so this kind of this is available at the WIA website, um, and you can kind of see which sports are going to be which. And as you can see, a lot of the sports are flip flopped or moved to the spring. Um, a lot of the larger contact sports have been moved to you know the end of or the winter or spring. Um, and so um, that was the two might impact us the most for season two and season three. Um, depending on how it looks then. Um, and I don't, and let me preface this too with saying, I have no idea if sports are going to even happen at all this year, to be honest. Um, I'm not giving an answer what yes or no. I think a lot of schools are doing that. We're just, it's kind of a wait and see approach in this WIA calendar here is, is as you can see, all dates are tentative. So all of this is tentative, um, but this is kind of where, what they have done to um, try to put together a sports season for the kids, which is hopefully something that we can do. Um, but that's kind of where we're at as far as high school sports. Um, for middle school sports, um, there's a couple different things that we've been pursuing. Um, number one is we're trying to join the Cascade League, um, which is another league with a lot of um, schools in the area. Um, and they compete in a few different types of uh, sports, basketball, um, I think soccer, um, and a few other ones that we're interested in for our school at least. Um, and then for the elementary kids, we're going to partner with uh, Mill Creek Sports League. Um, and what they do is they offer basketball for the kids. Um, and so elementary kids will be able to participate in basketball. Eight. It's K through eight. Um, and so if you don't want to participate at the middle school level through our school, through WIA, you will be able to, to join that as well. Um, and so those are some of the options that we've been pursuing as far as sports goes. But this year is not going to be a normal year for sports. Um, nothing is going to be normal as far as the scheduling or the, um, even the possibility of the season might not happen at all. Um, so I want to throw that out there and make that sure that's very clear, but we are doing everything that we can. We're doing our best to get the opportunities for the kids to participate. I want to be back coaching the boys in basketball. Mr. Hunt wants to be back coaching the girls in volleyball. <laughs> um, and so we want those things to happen. Um, but that's kind of where we're at right now. We're kind of in a wait and see approach and, um, it'll be interesting to see how the fall season goes with the sports that they're trying to do in the fall. The Mill Creek League, though, we're really excited about because mm -hmm. that's a for sure thing. So we're definitely partnering with them, um, whether it's going to start this year or next year. So all of our kids starting in kindergarten will get to participate in sports and they get to be on teams together. Um, and we don't have to coach all of them. Uh, that's kind of a joke because <laughs> um, they have coaches for those teams. Um, so we're really excited about that. And the gentleman that um, runs the league seems really, really nice. It's called Mill Creek, but um, a lot of their they have it's based on what location you're in where your practices take place all of it's so, in the Everett school district. so they have a lot in the Everett school district so even though it's called Mill Creek I don't know what the title of the league is yeah. um it a lot of most of the stuff will occur in Everett yeah all the games and practices take place they lease uh, and rent buildings through the uh, Everett school district so it's all in this area which is really nice um, so that's all I had for sports. Hopefully, like I said, we'll hope and pray that um, we're and able. And the pricing is reasonable too. That's great too. Um, which we'll send out all that information to you guys. He's uh, I don't do you remember his name? Mm -hmm. Um, but the director, the the person who runs the league, is trying to get together a fall program right now because of the weird season that we're in right now. He, they haven't been able to send that out. Um, and so they're trying to decide on what they're going to say as far as the year goes. And that's the only reason we haven't sent that out yet to you guys. But as soon as we get it from them, we'll update on that as well. Yeah, I'll keep you updated on, you know, what the schedule looks like and if there's the opportunities to compete and stuff, because we do want to get the kids out in a safe manner and let them compete. 
Um, I think it's important. A lot of the kids didn't get the closure that they wanted at the end of last year with competing and uh, kind of breaks my heart to see the seniors go out not being able to participate in spring sports and those types of things. So um, hopefully we'll be able to provide those, but there's no guarantees going forward, at least for this year. Um, anyway, so that's the update on sports. What else we got? I think that's every, I think we went through everything. Okay. I think we can open it up to questions. All right. So that is everything that we have as far as us. Um, and so how I want to open up the, the question period is, uh, oh, Mr. Mr. Hunt, go ahead. Sorry. Are you muted? I don't know why it automatically meets you again. There you go. Um, just so you know, chapel will no longer be a whole school for now. It chapel's going to be in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, you can't meet the whole school at once. I mean, all right. of the elementary together and all of high school, middle school will just now have chapel in their rooms. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a good point. Normally we do like a chapel message service where we have high school, middle school together. Um, and then we have the elementary together at a separate time. Um, and then we do a worship service um, towards the end of the week. Um, we will do those, yeah, like Mr. Hunt said, in the classrooms instead, just so we don't have to have that many people in, in one room. That's a good point. Um, anything else, Mr. Hunt? Um, I like your shirt. That's, um, that was not coordinated, by the way. <laughs> I know, we look great. We look matching. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. You make it look better than I do, though. <laughs> I didn't even notice until now. <laughs> All right. Um, so how the question and answer period is going to work is, is if you have a question, go ahead and say that you have a question in the chat. You can either type your question in in the chat or you can just say I have a question. I'll unmute you so that we can talk face to face. Um, but it looks like we do have a few other questions. Do middle school have sports available? Elementary. Um, I think we went over that um, already. Um, the, but to recap, yeah, to recap, middle school sports, we're trying to join what's called the Cascade League. Um, that might not probably happen until next year. We also um, have a second, though. The right. Mill Creek League was is also right. middle school. Yeah. yeah, so and then the Mill Creek League goes K through eight. So um, that will at least be basketball option. And then um, they don't have anything else as far as that league goes. Um, but K through eight will be, have the opportunity to play basketball. Like I said, for this school year, I cannot guarantee or promise anything. Um, but we do have those options available normally and hopefully they will be able to happen this year. And um, elementary is the Mill Creek League yeah. and tumbling, yeah. which I do. Right. And Mrs. Heather helps with. Can you go over what the hybrid option is again? K-5 in person and did you say 6-12 online? Um, that is essentially, yeah, what we, as far as if we're going to do a hybrid, that would be the exactly right. K through five in, or pre-K through five in person, 6-12 through 12 possibly online. No matter what, pre-k will be in person and we'll have emergency care like this is the worst of the worst that could possibly happen um but pre-k will be in person and we will also have emergency care it's emergency care so it's not restricted to only pre-k um but so there's not gonna there shouldn't be any disruption in pre-k and then we were discussing because we know that there are some people that have some difficulty being online with their learning as well. So that's things that we can talk to families if we get to that point um, where we have discussions one on one with them as well and what we can do with them in the building um, to extend kind of the emergency care type of thing to assist with that because we don't want um, if we got to that point. I don't know. I don't know where we would be at in order to get to that point, but we also don't want without knowing, you know, a specific return date or any of that. We don't want kids to just not be learning. And so we'll create a solution for you guys and work with the family if we were to ever get to that point. All right. Uh, how many kids are currently in each middle school grade? I can't give an answer to that exactly, but I can tell you we have 25 middle school and was it 17 high school? total, so approximately a little over 40 um, high school, middle school kids. Um, and I think that answers the next question as well. Uh, how many kids are in each middle school grade and then how many high schoolers? Yeah, so for a little over 40 for high school, middle school total um, is how many we have this year, or at least right now. Uh, and we get new enrollments and those types of things happening pretty frequently right now, but that's where we're at right now. I think it was like 42. Yeah, we usually have our, we haven't had our enrollment push yet for our actually our normal enrollment push we normally have it the last two weeks of august so that's a better time to and we can basically probably give you the numbers more accurately at the end of august which is i know last minute but that's when it happens for us 
unfortunately. We'd like to have it happen before then. Yeah, but, <laughs> but that's just the time of year that it happens. Um, How many kids are enrolled in kindergarten? Go ahead. With that. Kindergarten, we are going to max at 18. And um, we are actually pretty much at our limit right now. We have a couple of students that are part-time that are enrolled. Um, so we are... We're either going to have a second small kindergarten or a um, second junior K, which is kind of our early entrance kindergarten, um, because we have three pre-Ks right now. We have a year one, a year two, and then what's called our junior K or early entrance kindergarten. First grade? How many? On that. average, we have about 15 students in each of our elementary classes. Question about the hybrid model. Yes. You gotta unmute her. Oh, yeah, I can unmute you. <laughs> Do you wanna unmute people? Yeah, I'd rather talk to them face to face. <laughs> and we said we were going to. See if we go Laura, to online for kids. Unmute. Similar to last. She's time. gotta unmute herself now. Let me. There we go. Okay, there we go. That's some feedback. Yeah, you're in space, outer space. Maybe you should type. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, figure that out or type it. Uh, let's do this one. If we go to online for kids, will it be similar to last spring? The days were long and just wondering if it would be similar. We are actually flexible. So this is the way that we did it last spring, kind of to break it down for other people who weren't um, with us, is we followed for the most part, the regular school schedule, especially for the high school and middle school. Um, we had a bit longer of a break in the middle, um, but yes, that's a lot of screen time and none of us enjoyed it. Um, but our goal as teachers was to make sure that we got the face-to-face -face with the students. So what we did with um, some of the elementary was that we offered for any families that were saying, oh, this is just too much. Um, we don't want to be on the screen this much. We're still willing to do that with, the, with families too. And that goes up, up through grade 12. We're, we don't only make modifications for um, the younger kids. So we could definitely do that. Um, for the online, it's going to be a little bit differently. It's going to be more, um, I would say, self-paced. The teachers are going to be available, and there will be times where we require the kids to be face-to-face -face on the screen. But it'll be a little bit less than what we did in the spring, because we did that was some of the feedback that the days were really long, and we get that. So it's more, we've been looking at a lot of different models. Um, it's more collaborative, um, I guess, in a sense, because what we're going to do is, um, we'll have the assignments, we'll have, you know, the core content that we're trying to teach, but it'll be more that the student will learn it uh, kind of at their, at their pace, whether, it, you know, there'll still be due dates and stuff for assignments, but they'll be able to, you know, either watch a video or watch a streamed video that we make, the teachers make, or a classroom session that we make. Um, and then we'll meet together and have questions and go over all that stuff together. So it's a little, it'll be a, a significant less screen time than it was um, in the springtime. So if, I hope that answers your question a little bit. But we will still be available. Right. We'll still be on the show. That was our point of doing what we did this last year was we want it to be available for all of this, uh, the parents and the kids whenever they needed us. Um, mm -hmm. We're hoping that's not where we're going to be at, but just to answer these questions for you guys. Yeah. I think I missed one. Hold on. Nope, I didn't. Um, um, Lauren, did you get your audio issues figured out? Okay. Yeah. I'll go ahead and unmute you. We'll go to you next. There you go. Um, okay, can you hear me? Yep, much better. Okay, good. I'm not in space anymore. <laughs> Sorry, you may have answered this with Damon, um, but about the hybrid for high school, mm -hmm. um, it was a long day last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering about the possibility of a hybrid, not just for the school where some students but for the actual students where mm -hmm. maybe like a block schedule, especially since high schoolers are on that already, where mm -hmm. they would go to school like Monday and Wednesday and then other kids on Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. So to, to oh, limit- for in-person, is that what you're saying? For in yeah, for in-person. So like the hybrid you're talking about is- Yeah, online only. Is hybrid, is hybrid for the school itself as a whole, but a lot of places are doing hybrid for the students where the students are partial in school, in person, and partial at online. Mm -hmm. that an that, option? Yeah, I mean, that is something we've looked at for, for us. That's the we high school, middle school is, is smaller. 
Um, so, so the, the reason behind that is so that we, you can have less kids in school yeah, at one time, right. Right? right? For us with only 40 kids, it's pretty yeah. manageable. Right. Um, and, but for the feedback that we did, and it has been pretty consistent that it was a very long day for a lot of the high school and middle school kids. Yeah. And so that's more, we, we've been doing a lot of research on what works and, and getting feedback from people who do actually teach online and that's all they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot more self-paced as far as they're able to learn the material, but then we're available for them if they have questions or those types of things. And we still will have assignments and structure because I think that's important, um, but being available for the kids and being and answer those questions, but not require them to be necessarily all day on the screen, um, I think is really important. Um, but as to answer your question, I, it is something we've thought about, but for us, it's, it is pretty manageable with only 40 kids. So I don't know if that would be a benefit or not. Um, honestly for us individually as a school, right. um, just because if we had two and two that we'd have what, like 20 kids total in high school, middle school each time, which might help, it might be something we look at. Um, but right now I think it would be more, um, if we're in person that we could manage, you know, 15 high schoolers pretty easily based on you know, class size and that kind of thing. Yeah, and I mean, I don't, maybe I don't understand the science behind all of it, but if Pierce were to go two days a week versus four days a week, that's half the time that he's potentially exposed. Sure, so, that plays into it too, for sure. Yeah, so, but the other part about last year and being online though, is I really liked the accountability for him to have some <laughs> to answer to yeah. besides me. Yes. So that sort of self-paced. Yeah could be harder so anyway we'll just yeah. and yeah and by self-paced I mean more so like we won't require them to be necessarily in like a face-to-face -face class but there okay. still will be accountability and due okay. dates and okay. things that they have to turn okay. in by certain okay. time frames okay. um, but that's a lot of what we we didn't realize that there were a lot of schools I guess because we were teaching at the time that were not doing very much and we knew that there were a lot of people that weren't face to face really at all but we didn't really the, realize the extent even to like some private schools um and so just as we've been going into these like emergency um the backup situation scenario type things that we've been thinking up for um this upcoming school year um we've been looking all and we know what it was like to be on the screen all day long too right yeah. and so we you know we can imagine how the kids feel too and also part of it was that you know their friends or people that they know that are going to other schools aren't online or doing anything and they're forced to be there during the school day all day right so to them it was super unfair right yeah. i think so, i think the piece that set us apart though was our we knew from the very beginning that that structure and being there um you know, every single day with them and being available was really important. I think getting that number down a little bit as far as screen time, um, where we were requiring them to be face to face, I think that is important. I think that's really good yeah. feedback that we've gotten. Um, and so the, um, you know, getting to a middle ground, if we have to do that, um, I think is, is best. And that's kind of what we're looking at as far as if that is something that we implement. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, let me look at some of these. If we go to Kids Online, will be similar to last? Oh, that was from? Um, masks aren't 24 seven. Um, it's gonna be during situations where they like are gonna be close contact and those types of things. Um, so it's just preventative me measures. It's not something we think they're gonna be wearing them all day long. Um, is there a fast track towards GED? So we don't do GEDs at the school, but I know what you're, you're just talking about uh, getting like uh, graduating early with a diploma. Um, which, so Washington State, anybody actually can do it pretty much through, so yes, in a way, um, you have to meet credit loads. Um, so there's a certain number of credits in each um, subject area that you have to meet in order to graduate. So if you meet those requirements ahead of time, um, then you can graduate early, um, which we've had some, like four students from our school do. Um, it says it's our month month option. Um, yes, yeah, so there, I mean, there is, we require a 30 day notice to unenroll. Um, that's what we asked for as far as if you do decide to unenroll. Um, and as far as a trial period, not necessarily, um, but month to month, yeah, we do we, require a 30 day. We notice. always do trial days for families um, when they're going through, and sometimes that can be several days for trial periods um, for new families. Um, 5G, we don't have any. We have Wi-Fi in the building, but we don't have 5G now. Yeah. 
Um, industrial art classes. That's kind of interesting. We're expanding our arts. Um, and so just as the, but it's based on, you know, student numbers and where we are so we can have um, additional teachers and things like that. So we're looking into different things like welding and, and stuff like that. We actually talked about it this upcoming year or last end of last school year. So we are looking into that also. Um, how can you reach either of us in person or on the phone? You haven't been able to get through. Apologize for that. Um, the school phone right now is ringing off the hook and we do answer every time it comes through. So I'm not sure what the disconnection is there, but I can. If you are trying to reach us on the school phone, because we are having, to be honest, our school phone is kind of it's sort of a little bit not working sometimes. So um, if you text us, if you're not able to get through for some reason on that school number, we'll still be able to get the message. Um, and we'll try to find out what's going on there. Um, but you can also email us, email or text. Um, are the school day hours 8.30 to 4 p.m. going to apply to both in-person and distance learning students? So that will be when we're available as far as online goes. That's when the teachers, and we're available usually after that too, um, but the screen time won't be required uh, for the full day like we did in the springtime. So it'll be different like we just kind of discussed with um, Lauren. Um, will Google Classroom be used for assignments is in person i find it very helpful yes 100 percent. we are going to be utilizing google Classroom. for those of you that didn't like it i'm sorry but we're <laughs> we train your kids too so um but oh it was wonderful wonderful for us as staff to learn that program we have a different program but it allows us to jump on and see when your kids are on assignments actually working on them and we can and the files never get deleted um even if they sometimes say that they think the files get deleted because um, we can still pull them back up if they accidentally get deleted. Um, so it's for us, it's a really great tool um, because if they're even ever at home and they're like, oh, I don't know how to do this or whatever, we can just jump onto their assignment and actually start typing and helping them or whatever it is, or they can leave notes and we can go in and we can um, answer those questions. Yeah, being an English teacher, it was amazing. I was able to yeah. literally sit there and watch them write their assignments. And I could See just, when they're in. I could butt in and type and be like, are you sure this is a good thought? Maybe want to redo this one or it was actually really neat. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't they, <laughs> like it that much. No, they, they thought it was funny most of the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, Pier I'm sure Pierce thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, but yes, Google Classroom will be utilized. We still will be doing ThinkWay for report cards and those types of things, but Google Classroom is something we're gonna use both in person and online. Um, teachers were, will be wearing uh, face shields and masks, except whenever the masks are, when they have to obviously see their faces. Hi, Pierce. Pierce, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> Except when we have to see their faces and everything, and then or, or when they're social distance. You're looking the, tan. You must be out in the summertime. They only have a few minutes. Sorry, sorry. Or when they're the, um, social distance from the kids, then they um, don't have to wear the mask coverings either. But you, they will have face shields on. You answered that one. Um, what are the masking programs for teachers and staff? And can you go over the protocol for days to stay home with and without a negative COVID test? Yeah. So, um, as far as like being sick in general, you know, you would follow kind of the same procedures as you would if your child is getting sick, you keep them home if they're not feeling well. Um, if you end up finding out that you're, that the child has been around somebody that is COVID positive or um, themselves gets tested COVID positive, that's where those 10 day and 14 day wait periods come in. Um, and that's just the guidelines that we've been given by, was it the DOH or the CDC? Maybe both. Both, yeah. Um, and so if you, they don't get tested, it's supposed to be a 10 day um, free of symptoms. If they get tested, or I mean, sorry, 14 day free of symptoms. If they get tested, it's supposed to be, I believe 10. And, um, but I'll send those out to you too. Um, but it's not anytime anybody comes down with a sniffle that they have to be out of school for, you know, 14 days. It's just, if you know that they've been around somebody that's COVID positive or they themselves are, um, COVID positive, then there's those specific guidelines that have to get followed. If we have to send a child home that we notice that they're sick, then that's also when it comes into play. Um, so 10 days if they test negative and 14 days if you decide not, uh, not to um, have test. them tested. Yeah. Um, and that's for a child if they're sent home. Um, yeah. Can you explain what foundational English is? Um, so foundational English is like the basics. So, uh, but every day, so um, kind of kind of business English. So 
resume. You can explain more of it, right, yeah, yeah, Mr. Hunt? Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, essentially foundational is exactly what it is. It's the, you know, grammar, sentence structure, um, and then we also build a business aspect into it where they are creating resumes, they're learning how to write cover letters, um, they're learning how to communicate via email, kind of written communication. Um, and so it starts off kind of building on, you know, we'll start off with um, how to write a sentence, you know, um, then how to write a paragraph, how to write multiple paragraphs, how to write a page, how to write a three page essay, and we kind of build from there. Um, and so that's kind of, it's more foundational in it that it isn't more like, there's not really a literature component of it. It's more emphasis on writing and writing ability um, and learning um, how to put sentence structure and those types of things together. So hope that answers kind of more of your question. Playing, Playing golf. golf. Amen, brother. I want to, <laughs> I love, I, I wish I could play golf, but I don't have golf clubs right now. Um, could a bandana take the place of a face screen? They don't have to wear the face shields. It's one or the other or what, what are we saying for the different ages? Um, but we are requiring if, if so, yes, I think a bandana would be fine um, for a face shield if you have a child in that age group. Um, we're trying to not make the younger kids wear masks just because one, it's going to be very difficult for them to um, keep it on. Um, and two, um, you know, the, the younger you are, the harder it is to um, enforce touch. any or not yeah. touch. And, you know, the, it's not really going to be useful, really, honestly. Um, and so I think a bandana would be just fine. Um, I think we would be fine with having a younger child wear a bandana as opposed to a face shield as long as they wore them as, as when the face shields are required. Uh, when will link for Friday care allow us to sign up? Oh, uh, tonight. I'm so sorry. I should have put that up. That's my fault. I forgot. She's making a note of it right now. Yep. I have it done. I just don't have the link online. Do we need to sign up for extended care or is that billed after the fact? It's um, so extended care is billed after the fact. We just have it every single day. Um, we keep track for the week and then we'll add it to a QuickBooks invoice at the end of the week and then you'll get to pay it. All right, that is all the questions that we have. If anybody else has any other questions, feel free to let us know. It doesn't cut us off right at seven, so we're good. All right, any other questions? We'll give you this time. When can I, can be, I be unmuted? unmuted? Yes, you oh, can. You can unmute I'm sorry, I've been failing at my job here. Unmute. Oh, you raised your hand and everything. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, just because it happened this summer, um, we took her to the Emory to the doctor and had x-rays and like she had a cough. Um, yeah. It wasn't COVID. Don't worry, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she just has allergies. But do we need yeah. for the start of the year to bring in like a doctor's note or anything like that? For, yeah, like, so if there's anything like that, that would, we probably will require it because we're going to be looking at symptoms and we're not going to be able to tell one way or the other and if we have that many kids. So that's probably what we will ask for from families. Um, yeah. Yeah, if they're seen by a doctor and they, you know, it's been recently and they say, you know, she's fine, that she's just got a cough, this is allergies, then yeah. If we have that on file, that's totally fine. Which happens. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you share information with the state? In you mean like if we were to have a COVID positive I'm result? Assuming that's what, yeah. We haven't had any, so we have not shared anything with the state. Amen. <laughs> um, uh, so you know, if we had a COVID a COVID positive result, then we would have to um, the Department of Health would have to get contacted, and they because they're the ones who guide us through. Um, the procedures for that because we actually have to every school has to have an annual um, inspection um, from the Department of Health anyways um, so we're already that's part of a regulation already as a school so the answer would be potentially yes yeah they may just give us guidance over the phone which is what they've done with a lot of schools um, so it's not necessarily you know reporting anything specific just guidance Are there any new teachers this year? Yes, we're actually, um, Mr. Greg is going to be, for those of you that know him, um, he is like full-time at his church right now, which he told us he was gonna be this upcoming year. And um, he has a lot going on with his church. And so we are hiring another middle school, high school teacher. And we actually have 
um, a couple of different candidates and we're making a decision this week, probably tomorrow, actually. Yeah. We have some really good um, options. I think they'll, they're going to do a great job and be um, really yeah. amazing with the kids. Um, so yeah, for high school, middle school, we'll have one. Mrs. Um, Serna is still the fifth grade teacher. Mm -hmm. Yep, still culinary arts and cooking electives. And choir, we have it, but we will probably not have it for a semester is what we're thinking. So it's probably going to be a second semester and we'll replace choir with a different elective. So we'll flip them. Yeah, reason being is having the kids together singing is um, proven to be um, a, spreader. a spreader for the, or transmitting, so. And again, okay. we wanna be in school. We're being extra cautious. We don't necessarily know that any of these things are truths or not, but we wanna be in school and you guys wanna be in school. So we're being as cautious as we can to get everybody back. Yeah. Um, and we know that everybody's situation is a little bit different as far as how, you know, they feel about the virus or how, you know, we're kind of separating all of that um, and doing what's best for everybody. Because we do have people that, you know, myself, I have a heart condition. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know that, um, that I have, that I deal with. And, and it doesn't really bother me on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, essentially, it's called atrial fibrillation, and I have to have my heart shocked every once in a while back into a normal rhythm. Um, it sounds scary and it is kind of, but it's something I've dealt with since I was 12 years old. So it's not something that's going to kill me. Um, my doctor did tell me to be extra careful during this time with COVID and those types of things. So I know that, um, and everybody's unique in that, right? There's people that deal with certain things and have different conditions that we might not know about. And so we want to take all that into consideration and hopefully have an option for everybody because, um, we want every, every kid to have the best experience that they can and every family to have the best experience that they can. So we truly do care about each one of you guys. Will repeat the determining factor well, there, if it's going to be hybrid or complete online learning? Good question. So um, there isn't necessarily going to be one determining factor as far as when it's going to be, uh, whether we choose, you know, the hybrid or whatnot. We're keeping a track of many different variables, right? Where the state is, um, the guidance from, you know, Department of Health, the guidance from the CDC. Um, and really, ultimately, we're, you know, putting it in God's hands. And, you know, if we're comfortable and we feel that the numbers are where they're supposed to be, the, the the risk is never going to be zero, and we right? Don't have and we know that. Um, but we want to get it as close as we can to be zero because we want everybody to be healthy and safe while they're at school. Um, but I know I'm not really answering your question in a direct manner, but there isn't going to be one determining factor that we're going to look at that says, okay, well, that's going to make it 100% be that. It's going to be all those together. Um, and so I hopefully that answers a little bit of your question. But, but also as far as like the being the hybrid model that's what we had spoken about before this meeting too for the older kids because there wasn't much of an option beyond pre-k this last year um, when we all were forced online and so that's something that um, we don't want to be the case again we want people that if they need the help or they need to be in person then we're able to um, make that happen um, because there were, uh, you know, a few kids for the most part, most of the kids did okay um, with online learning. It was a long day, like we were saying, um, but we knew the ones where, you know, we need to be in person with that student. And so, yeah. Can we, oh, I'm sorry, will there be an online option for classes during them staying home if they are sick? Yes, we are going to be recording our classes and making sure that they have that availability as well. Um, we don't want anybody to fall behind or feel like they're out, you know, if they're sick or uh, dealing with anything. So yes, there certainly will be those options available. But start, part of our um, sick policy too, just in general, is if the kids are sick, um, they need to rest also, but you guys all know that. <laughs> so don't feel like we're not a major, like you have five hours of homework because you missed a day of school type of school either. We believe in education and we believe it's very important, but um, we also understand life. And, you know, when you're sick, you need to take the time to get better and to take the time that you need to rest. Doesn't mean kids can call and act like they're sick every single day because we'll catch on to that. Um, uh, can we expect any other costs during the months for programs and festival holidays? No, really programs. We have um, a carnival. It's $5 if kids want to earn prizes. Um, that'll probably be pushed probably towards be the that. end of the year if we do it. We normally yeah, have it. We'll probably the move a lot of our performances and our programs and things to the springtime yeah. versus wintertime. Yeah. Um, so like our Christmas program will probably move to the summer and we'll kind of... <laughs> Christmas in the summer. Not summer, <laughs> springtime. Our dinner. We have a dinner and auction that we usually do with our Christmas program. Yeah. Um, We're trying to avoid getting a, a mass group of people together. That'd be interesting, though. 
I celebrate it. <laughs> Christmas Jesus in July. In, Jesus in July or Jesus in June. Um, um, question on quarantine and if teachers get sick. I'll ask in person when it's my turn. All right, you want to uh, unmute. Gotcha. This is Joanna. I unmuted you. At least I think I did. All right. I think you can hear me now. <laughs> it's Luke, not Joanna. <laughs> and she's, uh, she's working tonight. Uh, she only has a few night shifts left, and then she switches to day shifts for nursing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know you'll email these out, but I just want to ask again. So um, first, for temperature checks, will the teachers do temperature checks mm -hmm. on arrival as well? We're going to have people at the door, so the kids are going to walk okay. in, so we'll know when they walk in, so we'll have basic... No, for, for the teachers, are we going to take... Oh, them? yeah, the staff will be. Staff. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm sorry, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then we're, if... Sorry, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, we'll, we're gonna, we hold ourselves to the exact same standards as any of the kids that attend, right? So if we get sick, right. it's the 10-day versus the 14-day, um, and, you know we'll go get tested and they'll we'll be quarantined and if they have a positive uh, COVID-19 test even if it's past that 14 days then they have to be symptom free right and then COVID uh negative so yeah okay, we actually so have extra subs this year too okay um, so at least right now at this point and they are right. all aware of the you know the situation we're in mm -hmm. so they're okay and good to go should we need them also um so for this if, year. if a teacher has symptoms um or a student has symptoms uh, let's let's go with the teacher example do you does the whole class. class get sent home then or will that just be determined on a case specific basis or do you know what it'll be case specific and it'll that? be it'll depend on because if a teacher goes home with a symptom um then they're gonna we will require them to go get tested asap right so that we know what it is and then if that's the case then we do have to end up you know the class will be affected um, if it's negative, then obviously then that won't be a big deal, but we're hoping that our teachers won't, um, you know, a lot of them, you know, all of them do a really good job of managing their sicknesses in general. Anyway, if they're mm -hmm. sick, we, we've asked even in the past when this isn't going on to not, to not come to school. Right. And so hopefully that isn't the case, but if that does happen, it will depend on the, the outcome of the, the test that's taken. Yeah. Right. I don't think that, um, so again, because it's we're not going to be able and we wouldn't want to force people to necessarily test or not test either. And so it's going to be a lot of parents like just really staying on top of is my child OK today or should I keep them home just in case type of thing. So mm -hmm. being more on the cautious side this year, right. um, which I know is going to be really difficult because there are a lot of families that work too um, throughout it. But that's kind of what we're counting on from families if they uh, if we notice symptoms throughout the school day we have the um kind of nurses room up front which is where they'll be located and we'll expect parents to come and pick up so they'll get isolated they will have already been around the kids in the class um but that doesn't necessarily mean just because a kid has symptoms of being sick that we're going to quarantine the whole class um or the or the teacher for that matter but if we do find out that somebody's you know COVID positive it's going to be dependent on the situation where they were and exposure and all that and oh. um department of health um what how they guide us on that yeah we wouldn't send the whole class home just if like teacher went home sick during that day it would the outcome would like i said depend on what the test said essentially right until if they did if they're positive yeah that right. that makes sense um yeah i think that makes sense um yeah because like judah had like a sore throat but no yeah. fever so mm -hmm. we wanted to just be double right. sure and so we we kept him home yeah. until the test came back negative and there was still no fever or anything like that so yeah. and, and right. employers are just going to have to be aware and i've already yeah. been communicating with ours and most of the engineers at Boeing still are not on site. Um, yeah. right. if you are, and, um, that date keeps, put, keeps pushing out. So I think everyone is aware it's just going to be a mess and yeah, even more careful bringing them at home. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I, yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. I think just going in and setting the expectations that we're going to all be extra cautious and it is going to cause some inconvenience, unfortunately um on cert at certain times um erring on the side of caution in this situation i think is better um Agreed. so yeah that's kind of where we're our philosophy on it anyway and and like you said i appreciate your approach you know start in person stay in person and i would just add to that that um based on this spring and how hard that was and still is right now any in-person learning is a lot better than none at all so right we right. can all do exactly like you said as a family makes it really yeah. right. helpful for everyone okay thank you yeah, no problem. 
Uh, what are we at? Does, does anyone know how long someone who tests positive continues to be positive? That's uh, up in the air. I, I don't think scientists know the exact answer to that question, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of different information on that. Um, there has been a requirement, two negative tests, and then you should be fine if they're spaced out a couple days apart. Um, but I, I, it's really hard to answer that question, to be honest with you. It varies person to person. There are some people that test positive for, you know, a, a few days. There are some people that test positive for months. It, yeah. it so really has varied. Kind of been proven kind of yeah. 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 And that's unfortunate, um, too, but we have to work with what we're given and, um, it's really hard to, to put a good answer to, to your point or your question, just because, we have 220 kids that we have to worry about. And um, if there's a false positive in there and one child has to stay home, then I guess that's that's unfortunate, um, but it is something that we have to require them to, you know, if somebody does go home sick or it, it does test positive, there's no way we can allow them back in the building until they are they test negative. Yeah. Um, and I know that that's not- Again, a, the extra cautious side of it, Yeah, I guess. Um, and we are gonna be, you know, stick to that just because safety is paramount. Um, uh, the testing I, I have heard has gotten much better. Um, it's gotten much quicker and much more reliable. Um, so hopefully that's still the, the case and it continues to get even better and, you know, we can go from there. Good questions. We are having fun answering questions. There aren't any more left. All right. <laughs> Nobody has any questions. We are going to let you guys go. This has been some good, not really face to face, but face to face time with all of you. Yeah, today. I got to see Pierce. I'm happy. <laughs> we got one. Does anybody know how long? Oh, no. Oh, thank thank you. you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, all right. We are going to let you go. Um, we are going to close in prayer um, and then let you guys go enjoy the rest of your, what day is it? Monday evening. Um, and uh, so we'll go ahead and close in prayer and we'll let you guys go. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much time that we got to spend together as a family, Lord, and um, go over questions about this upcoming school year, God, and um, everything's in your hands, Lord, and we just put um, all of our kids and all of our families and all of our teachers in your hands, God, and um, you can provide all the options and you can provide the ways and the means to um, come together and uh, be together as a student body, God, and um, I want to pray for everybody that this virus has touched, everybody that has uh, dealt with it personally or collectively, God, and um, we give it all to you, Lord, and we, we're only here because you allow us to be Jesus. And um, thank you so much for all these wonderful people that you've surrounded ourselves with, God. You've, you've put in our lives and in our school. I pray for each one of the students that they just have the, the best school year that we can possibly provide, God, and um, that they learn so much about you, number one, um, and learn where you're calling them to be, God. And um, Lord Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. You guys have a good rest of your night, and thank you so much for spending time with us. Yeah, thank you.